Hello, welcome to everyone. Um, for those who have tuned in before, you may notice a different backdrop, a little, uh, uh, not a virtual backdrop here. Um, I'm in Toronto for a few weeks, and so this is a, or I'm, I'm right in the heart of it with these beautiful windows around um, right downtown Toronto. So it, it's, uh, makes a nice nice light and uh, just a, a different uh, energy than where I'm usually situated. Hmm. So I've mentioned before that um, I'm in this currently also in a training um, to become an end of life doula. Um, which is a uh, someone that accompanies and supports people anywhere from pre-planning, um, pre-planning our intentions around death and dying, right up to vigiling with people in their dying time and uh, home funerals um, and and grief work and. I was listening to a talk this week from um, Danny Lavoir uh, from the National Home Funeral Association. And uh, it was a presentation offered to death doulas or end of life doulas, <clears throat> particularly around home funerals, because this is the Home Funeral Association. So some are just pausing because uh, some people may be kind of like home funerals what <laughs> and death doulas uh so just uh just to note that it's completely legal and to have home funerals to have uh, to return to this uh ancient and global practices of having our um our our folks dying with us or coming being at home after their death for whatever period of time um, feels appropriate. So that's what is um, being referred to there. Of course, there's much more to say about that, but that's not the purpose of this talk tonight. So in this talk, uh, Danny Lavoir said this quote um, that was something, my understanding was something that came to her that landed with her uh, regarding grief, which um, mm, we are all experiencing grief to different degrees right now. And probably most days we can't escape the grief of this world and, and the heartache and loss and mm, violence that's happening around around us and to us and she said hold hold the heavy in your hands so you don't only grapple with it in your mind so in her talk she was particularly referring to how grief and how mm, when we don't have this time mm, with with the, the our dear ones that have died when we don't have that time to move in and out of the grief and metabolize it really uh mm, i guess metabolize is the best word that's coming to me right now um then it can kind of stay locked in our minds and and we can try to grapple with it and figure these things out and to try to make sense of a world that is um, saturated in suffering. And she's pointing to uh, hold the heavy in your hands, meaning let it uh, be known in the body, not so much in the mind that wants to try to make sense of things that don't make sense, but to um, uh, let it be in our hands and in how we act and how we respond in the world and 
how we reach out and who we touch. Um, yeah. And how this helps us to metabolize trauma and to um, work through grief in a different way. So this has been resonating with me this week and in particular today more so uh this is um a day that in some cultures is recognized as in bulk as a, a the midway point between winter solstice and spring equinox halfway between winter and spring <laughs> the this transition from the short, dark, cold days to the longer days. And depending where you are, there may be, uh, what are those little, sweet little white flowers? I think they're called snowdrops. Snow, the little white that come up in this, uh, this season, depending how much snow you have um, or where you are in the world, where you are, or what time you're watching this. Um, yeah, so, um, and I was, there was a a piece, it's a little taken out of context from a sutta called the Sata Datu Sutta. It's a sutta of the seven properties. And um, in it, the Buddha says to the monastics that are there, he says, bhikkhus, the property of light is discerned in dependence of darkness independence on darkness of course we we know this there's no experience of light without darkness it's like yin and yang that 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 um it's in relation to or independence on darkness the same with any 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 number of opposites or ends of a continuum that you want to com compare, uh, see in relationship to its opposite. In that sutta, it's really talking about the quality of light, of the light of discernment, the light of clarity as part of the awakening properties. Um, yes, but it, it with what I'm, the dots I'm hoping to connect tonight, it's uh, in this context of grief, of suffering, and how do we not let this become an overwhelm in the mind? And how do we cultivate not spiritual bypassing, but the skillful cultivation of the light, the the wisdom, the illumination of discernment that we want to bring into the world, that we want to cultivate within our own hearts and minds. Um, there's a, <laughs> if, you, if you've dropped in here very often, you'll recognize this poet, Rosemary Watola Tromer, who I often cite. And she wrote a poem called In Bulk. Goes like this. I'll put the link um, down below of this YouTube recording. And for those who are here on the Zoom, um, I can pop it into the chat if you remind me after the recording. <sighs> In Bulk by Rosemary Watola Traumer. Before the planting of the seeds, the preparation to plant the seeds. It's too soon for the soil, of course, but here, the hands of the planter. Rose milk lotion, rest. The time for verbs, later. These long nights, the time for dreams. Out of darkness, sprouting unstoppable budding. So this, this time, this, uh, this time of 
ceremony if you're um you know in, in uh america and canada these these ancient celtic roots became groundhog day or uh wireton willie day or whatever where they where um this time of looking to see the coming of the light and how much longer the darkness the winter is going to continue and but it's this time of uh planting seeds of that we're going to cultivate and bring them into fruition so i wanted to offer a meditation tonight uh of planting our seeds of intention, which is um, an important part of the Noble Eightfold Path, the middle path, the path to awakening. The um, intention precedes thoughts, intention precedes speech, and precedes action. So, uh, really, what intentions do we want to nourish and cultivate and what do we want to bring forth in ourselves and in the world um and also this illumination this mm, this light this time of sprouting um as rosemary refers to this unstoppable budding for me also touches into the qualities of uh some of us were chatting before the recording about the what are called the brahma viharas the sometimes referred to as the divine abodes of the heart the the uh qualities of heart mind or aware kind awareness aware heart that again that we want to cultivate it's like this i for me these practice these brahma viharas are like a seed i just really relate to it that way as a seed within all of our hearts that we all wish for happiness and joy um for the release relief of suffering of ourselves and others and for equanimity and um so this light of illumination this mm, seeds of intention that we want to cultivate uh have this quality of how do we let this grow and uh, come into brightness and fulfillment yeah so i think that's all i have to say in way of context or um introduction to the practice tonight you might like if you have it relatively handy you might like to light a candle tonight or um, change the lighting in your space maybe bring some more darkness in and have a light in the corner just to represent this uh theme that we're talking about <clears throat> Yeah, uh, or you, you know, you might like to turn away from the computer, and um, you can lay down. You could um, just adjust your posture for what what will support your practice tonight. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. Mm. And just as we're beginning the pro practice, I'll, um, I'm going to read another poem. And then I'll go into a bit of guided with some time of silence. So finding a posture that feels upright. Letting the shoulders rest back so the heart is mm, in a posture of opening. 
letting the head rest back over the heart so that we feel a sense of alignment of heart and mind. Feeling a sense of energy moving up through the spine like a like a plant, like a tree from our rootedness. This poem is inspired by a quote from Shakti Gawain that said, the more light you allow within you, the brighter the world you live in will be. And this poem is from Rosemary Wachola Tromer. It's called How the Light Came. And it was in the darkest time when she was most lost, before she even knew to ask for help, it was then the light arrived. As a firefly, so it happens, a radiance so tiny, she might have missed it, had it not lit up right in front of her face at the very moment her friend spoke of love. Perhaps she would have resisted it if she'd had any energy for resistance. Even the smallest brilliance can be terrifying when it asks us to see life as it really is, instead of the way we wish it would be. As it is, the love light entered her, humble as a beetle, significant as a star. It glowed so brightly others could see it. It responded to her trust. It met her in silent rooms and lonely days. It shined into deep uncertainty it offered her no answers. It suggested a thousand right paths. We could say the light didn't change a thing. We could say the light changed everything. Who was she to receive a miracle? Let's not call it a miracle then, call it wonder. Call it unlikely luck, but there is no way to pretend it didn't happen. Even now she tends that light and marvels at how it glows even brighter, the more she gives it away. Allow yourself to connect to your sense, your sensation of rootedness. The thawing in the ground as the roots seek out moisture and travel wide and down, wide and deep. Allow the body to receive the sensations of steadiness, groundedness, connectedness. In what ways are you, we, held and supported right now? Allow yourself to reflect and feel the sensations of the ways you are held and supported through love, through friends, community, from the earth itself, from the Dharma.
And see if there's any tension holding you up and away from that support and let it go. Let it thaw, let it soften and drop. Receiving the ground. We'll have a few minutes of silence together, resting into this sensation and energy of ground. Connecting to the ways that we are supported and interconnected. All of our roots intertwining and connecting in this invisible web. From this place of steadiness, now connecting with your seeds of intention. What do you want to plant in the heart of awareness? Plant the seeds of action in the world, response. the seeds of non-harm, seeds of non-ill will, the seeds of renunciation and letting go, These three intentions stated in the positive are the seeds of compassion, seeds of loving kindness, and seeds of generosity. So we'll have a few more minutes of silence together to Feel into what intentions you wish to plant and cultivate.
And if it resonates for you, perhaps seeing these intentions as a seed in, in the area of the heart center, this area that's called chitta, the heart mind or aware heart. And for tonight's practice, perhaps seeing that as a little spark, a little, a little light, that which with each breath, it's brightening that light, cultivating that light, like the sun coming towards a seed, warming it, brightening it. May this wise intention grow and brighten and deepen. May my words and actions cultivate non-harm in the world. Feeling the aware heart brighten. Perhaps growing or radiating the warmth of intention through the body. The bright light of discernment brightening the mind. And reconnecting to our roots of interconnectedness. And the bright light of wise intention. And perhaps bringing into heart mind now. Any others that naturally arise in your awareness. It may be someone you interacted with today or someone that came into awareness, maybe someone that's dear to you, someone that's suffering, it may be a group of people, the earth herself, itself. And then in this next few minutes of silence, either connecting, you could use intentions. May you be free from suffering. May you be safe and protected or just rest with this light of discernment, of illumination in connection with others.
tending that light as we marvel at how it glows even brighter, the more we give it away. Out of darkness, sprouting unstoppable budding. If you feel any overwhelm of darkness, of grief, of sadness in the heart that perhaps remembering what Danny said, to hold the heavy in your hands so you don't only grapple with it in your mind. So this may be placing a hand at the heart. Or feeling a hand on the belly, connecting to breath and ground. And in these last few minutes of the practice, see if there's a word or a short phrase that really lands for you of uh, planting this seed of intention.
And as you breathe, really let that be Im imprinted on the heart. Bowing to the light within each of us, the light of intention and kindness and non-harm in this world, may it grow within us and within each other. Thank you for your practice. So if you've joined us here on the YouTube recording, check the links below for um, those poems and uh, the sutta reference, etc. Thanks for being here.